So there's gonna be six, six ways to keep your fish safe in this video. What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Real Reefing TV. I'm Cody Grates and I'm here to help you save time, money, and frustration in the real reefing hobby, sharing my experiences and knowledge. And today we're gonna to be talking about ways that you can keep your fish safe by keeping stuff that shouldn't be in the aquarium out of it. I'll share what those are and ways that you can avoid putting those toxins into your reef tank. Now, if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. There's new videos coming out each and every week and I'm devoted to bringing you guys stuff that can really save you time, save you money, and keep you from pulling your hair out. Now, if you haven't joined my Facebook page already, go down to the description below and click the link, follow it, and like the page. That way you can get updates on what's going on more frequently. All right, so these are in no particular order, and I'm not saying that if you did this once that it's, you know, that, oh, uh, well, I, I had that happen and I, my tank didn't crash. You know what, you can absolutely get lucky, and sometimes it takes time for these things to build up in our aquarium. These things are just glass boxes, and if we don't change out the water, those toxins really start to build up in the tank and it can finally lead to a crash. So I'm trying to save you guys from having that happen and losing a ton of money and spending a ton of time rebuilding what you built. So the first toxin you wanna make sure that you keep away from your fish to make sure your fish and coral stay safe are aerosol sprays. Okay, <laughs> well executed. <laughs> so just like this Lysol, um, you definitely don't want to be spraying it around your tank or with the open top especially. So make sure that you stay, I don't know, six feet away, something like that. Give it some space when you're spraying these aerosol cans around in the air. Whether that be air fresheners or Lysol, just kind of trying to keep things clean. You definitely don't want to be spraying the tank. Same goes for like Windex. You don't want to be spraying your um, glass with Windex. If you are going to use some type of Windex, use ammonia-free Windex and make sure that you spray it on the paper towel first, away from your tank, and then go ahead and wipe down the outside of your glass. <laughs> Better. All right, so I actually had some ammonia-free Windex right here. And um, yeah, streak free shine. Okay, this is not sponsored by Windex whatsoever. Um, but again, spray it on the paper towel, then go ahead and wipe down the outside of your tank. So the, for the second point, I'm gonna need to take you over to the nano tank to show you a little bit more of what I'm talking about with this one. So let's go. Okay, so in here, we have the AI Prime up above the 10 gallon Nano. Side note, there I did add two fish to it, fire and ice. It's a fire fish and a blue dromus. Anyways, um, up here on this AI Prime, it has quite a bit of dust up here. If you notice, quite a bit of dust on the fan outlet. So um, actually that's the inlet. So it, it pulls air in from the top and expels it out the sides here. Um, through those fins. You definitely don't want to use any of those aerosol um, air dusters because those air dusters have a chemical inside of them that can absolutely wreck your tank. And again, you might have used them before and gotten lucky, but I would just stay clear of them from here on out. So one thing we can do instead of using those air dusters is actually grab our shop vac or vacuum cleaner Take the hose and suck that dirt right off. There. Clean as a whistle. Well, not exactly, but much cleaner than it was before. So for this next tip to keep your fish and coral safe, we want to make sure that whatever's on your arms doesn't end up in the tank. That could be things like cologne, those aerosol sprays that we talked about, that could be grease, oil, dirt. We just don't want that nasty stuff in our reef tanks. So let's make sure that we get them cleaned off first. But we definitely don't want to use any soap. That type of stuff can get in actually down in your pores of your skin and make its way into the tank, even though you rinse them thoroughly. So best bet 
is just to use some just plain old tap water and make sure that you get your entire arm rinsed off um, to the point that you're going to be actually putting your arm into the tank. Now, once we do that, obviously I don't want to run over to the tank with just dripping arms, so we're going to need to use a towel. Now, another tip for you is that we want to use a towel that um, we just use for our fish tank. And I don't wash this one all that often unless it gets really nasty. I really just mainly use it for drying off salt water or fresh water just like this. And this towel, we don't want to wash with any sort of soap. That may not be the option for you. you may ha it may have to be a towel that you just grab. I, that's okay. But definitely for your filter socks, when you wash those, only wash them in water and vinegar. Really, I mean, that's all you need. One bonus tip is you definitely don't want to dip the pit. Your, your armpits have deodorant on them. That stuff has like aluminum and all this other sort of chemicals. Read the back of your deodorant label. But we definitely don't want that in the tank. So make sure that you keep your armpit out of the water. Now, the next thing... Wait, what is it? Oh, check your equipment. Okay, now this one's gotten me before. Well, we definitely want to check our equipment. These power heads that are running constantly and all the time, they're susceptible to uh, the impeller and the magnets that are in there wearing off and you know just breaking down over time. But we definitely wanna make sure that we check those, get them out, clean them regularly, and inspect them for any sort of wear. And if they're starting to swell, bulge, we would definitely wanna get those replaced. And usually just swapping out the impeller does the trick. All right, now for this last tip, this is gonna keep those little tiny hands out of your tank. And what I mean by that is any kids or pets, we definitely wanna keep them out of the stand. Typically there's chemicals in there we don't want them getting into, but also we don't want them getting into our tanks, putting their nasty, dirty little grimy fingers and paws in the water down there or messing, turning something up like your calcium reactor or your doser or messing around with different tubes and spilling things all over the place. We want to keep them out of our stand. Now what I've used um, since I built this stand myself, I went ahead and put in this magnet, um, magnet lock, safety lock for kids. What's awesome is that you can't even see the locking mechanism on these doors. What you do is you actually put the, lock, put the magnet on there which retracts inside and that unlocks it so that we can actually open it up. And so that magnet unlocks the door for us. And so now it's locked. No one can get in these doors, but whoever has the key. So you can keep the key up high, we can keep it up here and the kids can't get to it. And then when we need to get in the tank, boom, grab it, unlock the tank and we're good to go. All right, guys, I hope that keeps your fish and coral safe. Keep that nasty stuff out of your tank. Keep on reefing. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, do it. Click that button right over here. And finally, if you like this video, click like. Throw down in the comments below and let me know what types of things you do to keep your fish and coral safe. I'd love to hear them. Anyways, I'm out, y'all. Peace.